All right, everybody, welcome to This Is It Before the Fire. Hey, guys, we have Zen on tonight. Man, I love hanging out with Zen. What a very humble guy. Um, for any of you that are having uh, problems on the uh, chat room, just go ahead and refresh your browsers and log back in. Um, it crashed. It's back up. Everybody's coming back in. So uh, if anybody in Justin TV chat room wants to give a quick uh, you know, signal that everything looks good there, and also on Blog Talk. Anyone in the chat room, just let us know everything's working. Okay, guys, let's pray and then let's crack this open. It's gonna be fun. Okay, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you just for this time with these people, and here so close to the end that we get to hang out and talk about all these just fascinating, fascinating mysteries that are in your Word, and how many of them have been revealed, you know, just recently, how many exciting things there are to know about you. Father, I pray that everybody opens their hearts and their minds, um, also that we throw out any predispositions um, and leave our hearts open just to the Holy Spirit. And Father, your Spirit is the Spirit of all, all truth, and it says the Holy Spirit cannot lie. So if the Spirit of all truth is in us, the Spirit of truth can discern clearly what's true and what's not. So Father, please uh, just... Open our hearts and our minds to your spirit, to Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. I'm going to read to you very quickly from Ephesians. Then uh, why don't you just shout out to everybody, and then let me just bust into Ephesians and set this thing up for everybody real quick. Sure. Well, it's always a pleasure to be with you, brother, and your listening audience. I consider, you know, the people that are here, um, fellowship and family, and definitely hardcore seekers of truth and um like my own listeners i consider them to be some of the the wisest on the planet um in having come to you know personal revelation on a lot of the discernment that we share um not many are able capable of handling these kind of truths um because it it basically destroys the whole foundation of the uh, belief systems that they've been taught, you know, ever since they were babies and yeah. um, and all that they thought they've come to know. And most are unwilling to release that and to let go and to open themselves to new possibility. And so because right. of that, um, most never, you know, come around to understanding right. these things. Right. Uh, you know, one, one addendum, I was talking to Zen before the show, and Zen and I, you know, I'm just, I'll cut to you guys know, I don't, I don't miss words. I just talk straight. You know, we have some understandings that are the same, and we came about them from different different ways. And, um, you know, one thing I want people to understand, this is not essential for you to understand in your Christianity. It's not at all. Christianity, you know, is levels. You know, even the Bible talks about, you know, being on milk and then getting on solid food. Well, at, at this point, you're past the milk and you're past the solid food, and you've gone on to graduate school, and you know you're you're um, you're, you're you're really delving into some of the really heavy heavy stuff, and it's really interesting because I wouldn't necessarily have been able to handle this myself without a personal revelation from God, uh, which happened when I was sitting in my driveway, and uh, Johnny Johnny Baptist had come down from Florida. And I remember I cried in my driveway for two days when I realized what Jesus had done and what God had done through Jesus and that God was Jesus in the flesh and what he was willing to go through to come and get me. I mean, I bawled. I bawled like a baby, dude, just for days. I, I'd pull in my driveway to park my car. And for some reason, that was my cue. I would just launch into tears. So let, let's just let, let me read to you real quick, and then set set this up real quick so Zen can talk about his new book. And also, we're going to tell you where you can get Zen's books because he's got some really cool stuff, guys. And like I said, he's come about the same knowledge that I have from different a different way. And you know, God has His own way of giving us the same thing through the Spirit. Okay, so here we go. Ephesians 2. I just want to submit to you first before I read it that before anyone gets saved, I don't care who you are. You know how I am. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. 
you had a spirit in you that was not the Holy Spirit. And you cannot argue with that because the Bible says, Jesus says, not just the Bible, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And he said, Nicodemus said, how can I enter my mother's womb? He said, no, no. Unless you're born of the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you have to be born again of the Holy Spirit. Okay, time out. What spirit was running you before? The, the spirit of what? Well, let's read the Bible. It says, and he, you, he hath quickened, Jesus has quickened, made alive again. You were dead, so you were the walking dead. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan, by the way. The spirit, so now they define who it is. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Okay, so there it is. Before you got saved, you were walking according to the spirit of a fallen angel. I don't care what anybody says. It's impossible to argue that. It's pure, obvious logic. So before you get saved, you're walking according to Satan. He, he tells you what to do, you do it. You walk in your trespasses, and you walk in your sins. That's all there is to it. And then you get saved. And you get quickened, made alive in Christ. And the old spirit has to go, and you install the new connection straight to God. It's the Holy Spirit. You cut off the old internet, which is the devil. You hook up the new internet, which is Jesus Christ, the, the, the modem straight to God. And there you go. That's what it looks like. So quick quick setup for the, the biblical concept that we're going to study. I told you guys I cried in my driveway for two days. I pulled in my driveway, and I was, tell, I was asking the Lord, who am I, man? Why did you show me all this stuff? He had already revealed the meaning of my name, Jonathan Cleck. means Yahweh is given. And I was like, what? Okay. So what's the deal? Who am I? And then I heard the Lord say to me, why do you think you're always falling out of the sky upside down? I was like, what? Why do you think you're always falling out of the sky upside down? And then I heard him say, I took the same punishment to come and get you. And I was like, what does that mean? I wasn't sure what he meant. And then I realized every point of purchase that I have for the sunglasses, I'm falling upside down out of the sky. Well, you all know that's my spiritual gift. You know, Isaiah 29, those who hide their plans turn everything upside down. And so I sat there and I, I thought about it, and I realized that... He was telling me about my first estate. I knew you before the foundations of the world. And I, I took the same punishment to come and get you. What punishment? Sounds like he took on flesh. God became a man. So I want to share with you very quickly. Here's the concept. Let's say Zen and I are brothers. Zen and I are both brothers. We're blood related. We have two big brothers that are trouble causers. They're always causing trouble, getting in trouble. One day, our big brothers take us out in the car, and we pull into an ice house, and Zen and I are sitting in the back seat, and our two big brothers get out, and they go in the ice house, and they kill the attendant, and they rob him. Well, we happen to live in a one-horse town, and our dad is the only judge. He's the most powerful man in the county, and we, we're sitting in the back seat. Our big brothers get in the car and drive off, and they're acting weird, and Zen and I say, what's going on? What are y'all doing? And they said, hey, man, we robbed the store and we killed the attendant. And Zen and I freak out and say, whoa, whoa, you did what? You got to tell dad. You got to tell dad. And they go, you better shut up. Y'all y'all are with us. You'll, you'll be in just as much trouble as we are if you tell dad. Don't forget who's dad. Dad's the judge. Okay, well, a couple of days later, big brothers get caught. And they go and they arraign them. The police department takes them in front of their dad, who is the judge. And said, Judge, we got bad news for you. We caught the guys that killed the attendant and robbed the store. And he said, oh, boys, uh, you know, you guys are caught. Just, I can't believe you did this. Okay, I'm going to have to sentence you to death. Or maybe I'll just cast you out or I'll banish you. Okay, well, then the two big brothers look at Dad and they said, yeah, okay, well, we know Johnny and Zen are your 
favorites. And you know what? If you're going to cast us out or you're going to commit us to death, you got to do the same to Johnny and Zen because they're just as guilty as we are. It's true. If God's going to re- – or if your dad's going to remain a righteous judge, he can't sentence the two brothers without sentencing the other ones. And so here's the scriptures. The scriptures say no one comes to the Son, no one, unless the Father draws them. That way, God can remain a righteous judge, and he can still come get the ones he loves and he knows weren't guilty. Here's the other scripture. You were predestined in Christ before the foundations of the world to be uh, like uh, to be conformed to the likeness of Christ. Romans. There it is, guys. Now let's crack it open, okay? Okay, ready for graduate school, guys? Here we go. <laughs> Zen, what's up? <laughs> hey, brother. Always a pleasure. I hope I explained that okay. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Well, you know, your listening audience knows your story and a lot of them are also familiar with my work and you know they also know that we have been brought to this knowledge through um through different ways and and have been brought to um this same perspective so that we can be confirming witness for each other in different ways my my own path was just in studying and seeking out the word and seeking you know, all of us, it's personal relationship, and of course, it's the Father and the Son that guide us and lead us to these revelations. Yes. Without them, um, none of us would have any kind of understanding at all, but because of their compassion and because of the blessings that they place upon each one of us individually, those of us that set a priority for making the kingdom, you know, the focus of our lives, that truly dedicate ourselves to um, seeking truth and understanding the gospel, they they meet us more than halfway, you know, and, and yes. they are looking for individuals like ourselves that are committed to, you know, to the kingdom in, to that degree. And, and when you, and any one of us can do this, you know, everybody listening now, you know, you and I are nothing special. Um, they, if they dedicated themselves in sincerity and earnest in similar ways, then absolutely the Father and the Son would meet them and pour upon them the blessings of the Spirit, and they would understand these things too. And that is the story for uh, for a lot of the listeners. And they are also right. have been brought to revelation on these things, and they are also confirming witness um, to the same stories that we have. Right. But my... My own personal walk was in just reading and studying all of the scriptures and and you know you know, and a lot of the other listeners know that I study everything, all the other extra biblical books, extra canonical books, the pseudepigrapha, the apocrypha, the Nakamata sure. codices, everything that I can get my hands on because for me um un- understanding the truth is like trying to to solve a crime um, in that yeah. the truth has been hidden from us and it has been stolen from the masses and has been um, gathered and kept by an elect, uh, an elite that doesn't want us to have a relationship with the father and the son. They want to distract us in such a way that we're too busy with the carnal aspects of flesh in this world to even um, go seeking anything of a spiritual nature, you know, to to put the kingdom as a priority and to go seeking for the larger questions of life and being. They want to keep us dumbed down and distracted with entertainment and the distractions of this world. And so, you know, I always, and all of us, we have a yearning deep within inside of us that leads us to want to know our creator and wants us to, understand who we are while we're here and what all of this is about. And so I've listened to that for a large part of my life, and and that's right. why I've done the, the research that I've done. And these you are and, just some you of the and Johnny that I've both, learned. You, you and Johnny both, I mean, you are the two most studied guys I know. <laughs> and I I always learn a lot. I, I like it because it, it edifies me, and 
what's cool about it is when you have the Holy Spirit in you, and and I'm just going to quote the Bible. It's a, the Bible says, you don't need anyone to teach you what is true, for the Spirit himself will teach you all things. Right. His teaching is true and contains no lie. So here's the exactly. thing. You can read something, folks, and you can read it, and then you can ask the Spirit, I need you to discern this for me. And because, you know, God does not want his children going down a path that is incorrect. There's no father that wants to watch his kid wander down a path where he knows it's going to end up bad. A father is not like that. That's a, that is not the nature of a, a good father, it's not at all. So what he'll do is he'll let you go down and he'll let you find what it is he wants to show you. And he will mm-hmm. allow you to absorb it and understand it and then apply it and then to find it in the scriptures. And what's so exciting is then I keep finding all this stuff in the scriptures. <laughs> it's kind of, right. Yeah. Well, that's that's the that's the most incredible thing, is the the revelations and and of course we share two of what I consider to be the most pr- profound secrets uh, that have been hidden from the masses, um, and and Christ refers to these things as secrets that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. Yeah. One of those that there are two different bloodlines on this planet and that um, that the interdiction goes back to not the sons of God in Genesis 6, but to the garden and to Eve and to there being Absolutely. two different bloodlines, you know. Um, and that's one of the, the biggest secrets. And, and you and I and, and Johnny, we've been covering that one for years now. And, and for a lot of people, it's still you know, new revelation to them. And it's necessary uh, in my opinion, not for salvation, but it's necessary in my opinion to unlock so much of what is uh, critically tied and veiled within the gospel that is linked to having that discernment. Uh, Matthew chapter 13 is an example of that. But um, another one of the larger aspects and one of the hidden truths that many people are are being led to and, and coming to discernment on is this other thing, the the sons of God, and that we um, pre-existed and that we had been predestinated, um, that incarnation into the flesh was not our, you know, our initial birth into creation, that that was when our flesh bodies came into the being, into the womb, uh, just as the word of God said to Jeremiah in chapter 1, uh, verse 5, when he said, I have ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations, but I knew you uh, you entered into the womb of your mother. Man, uh, I'm buzzy. <laughs> it's, it's My whole body's buzzy. For all of us, you know? Yeah, it's true because, you know, look, guys, here's the thing. If it doesn't match up with the Bible, I don't even go there. I won't go there because, but if you if it matches the Bible... And it, you get the witness of the Spirit. It's like, come on. I mean, what are, I, I build stuff then. You know, I mean, I, I've been, you know, I, I've been a builder. And and you know that when you build something, before you build anything, you have to have a plan for it. You don't even start building without a plan. So before there's a foundation, you have a plan for it. And mm-hmm. then... You build the foundation. So Jesus said, I knew you before the foundation right. of the world. So you were part of the plans. <laughs> so, right. you know, there's no way around that. And, and what I love about it is it's Jesus, which is God in the flesh, saying it. And I, I, I got to throw out these two scriptures because these are the ones that will just top this off. You know, in in John chapter 10, it's one of my favorite scriptures because God became a man. God became a man in Jesus Christ. Well, Satan and the fallen angels were gods uh, that became men. And I think it's interesting if you look at John chapter 10, when the Pharisees, when the Jews are going to stone Jesus, and they said, Jesus says, for what good works are you going to stone me for? 
And they said, we're not going to stone you for good works, but for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, make yourself equal unto God. They basically got it backwards. They said, you being a man, make yourself equal unto God. And then Jesus said, and don't forget who he is, he's God in the flesh. He says to his own creation, he says, do not your own scriptures say ye are gods? And if the word of God, capital G, came unto them that are called gods, why do you marvel that I say I'm the son of God? <laughs> right. And he says, and the scriptures cannot be broken. So there's no way around it now. God right. just said, the, you're God. You know, and that aligns with one of the um, crypt, the cryptic nature of Psalms 82. Where it it says, is Psalm uh, 82. God, yeah. yeah. God he was quoting in the it. congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked, Selah? Defend yep. the poor and the fatherless, do justice to the wicked and afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, in darkness. all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Of I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall, shall die, die like men like and men. fall like one of the princes. You know, the <laughs> princes are, are correlated to the sons of God, just like uh, the prince of the power of the air is Satan. And right. the, it's Satan here that we shall die like men, because just like Adam and Eve, when they fell, they lost their immortal bright nature. They were transformed from um, angelic status into that of, of fleshly bodies, and they became fallen and put into a fallen state uh, and also placed on a, a a fallen planet under the, you know, the uh, rulership of the, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world. And so most people don't understand all of that and how it applies to each one of us because that story is similar uh, for all of us in that we find ourselves now incarnating into flesh form, but we also preexisted and we were part of the Congregation of the Mighty, the Divine Council, and that we are also the sons of God. Absolutely. See, there, there's no – guys, I'm just going to say this. How is there any way around it when God in the flesh said, hey, y'all are gods, what's the big deal that I said I'm the son of God? <laughs> I mean, what do you do with that? There's no way around it. Well, I'll mm -hmm. tell you what – I just, you know, what he showed me was – and everyone's seen the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, and I don't care what anybody says. I know what it is because it wasn't me that figured it out. It was the Holy Spirit that figured it out. Right. You know what I mean? So his teaching is true and contains no lie. So when the Lord showed me the Akhenaten thing, and it showed me a fallen angel having sex with a human female, I was like, what the heck is this? And what did he create? A hybrid. Well, let me ask you guys a question real quick, just to support Zen. Okay. A lot of people say, no, no, there, there were no, you know, there was no intermingling after the flood. I'm like, what are you kidding? I mean, it says, first of all, Genesis 6 says, uh, in those days and after that. After, so, right. after that. But, guys, the spies went in to check out the promised land. And ten of them came back, and I will quote what they said. We cannot take the land, for we are like grasshoppers in their sight. The sons of Anak are there, the Nephilim. <laughs> it's like, guys, the Nephilim. And why are we not supposed to breed with them? Well, that would create a hybridized system, guys, and make more host bodies. Right. And also, that's why... The Father, because a lot of people that don't understand nor have this discernment, they think that the Father is cruel because he ordered Israel to wipe out every man, woman, and child. And, and unless nursing you have, child. Right. And unless you have this discernment, you don't know that they were the sons of Anak and that they were a fallen, um, you know, that they were part of the progeny of the fallen angels, that they 
worship the fallen angels, that they cannibalized humanity, that they uh, did victim sacrifice, they offered up their children to, uh, to children to idols, and mm-hmm. that was why. You know, there's so much that is within the word, even the story of David and Goliath and the wars of uh, David against the brothers, you know, Goliath and Saf and and all of the other um, brothers of Goliath. Uh, Even that is dependent upon this discernment, the separation of the wheat and the tares, the goat and the sheep, uh, the left hand from the right hand path. All these things are the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. All those things are are dependent on that discernment. Absolutely. You know, it was the greatest thing in the world for me personally when when I was able to discern images. And, you know, you you probably heard this, you know, Zen, but I've had several times, many times, you know, people come up and hand me a picture that they drew of me. And I thought, wow, that's a really weird thing. Why are people drawing pictures of me? First of all, that's weird. I mean, who comes up and says, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you? I mean, why? You know what I mean? That's bizarre to me. Um, Mm -hmm. And then on every single one of them is a dead sheep. I mean, whoa, wait a minute. Well, it was interesting because the first one that was handed to me, I'm sitting here holding it right here, anyone on Justin TV. That's the first one that was handed to me. And it. And on my head, it's got a sheep with its tongue sticking out on my forehead, or on the top of my head. And on the back of my head, there's a goat with horns, and its eyes are closed, and my eyes are closed. And when you turn it upside down, there's a serpent eating me. And I could not discern this before I got saved. And I want to give you the scripture. Jesus said, I've come to judge the world and to give sight to the blind and show those who think they see that they are blind. Okay. Then the Pharisee said, Hey, are you saying we're blind? And Jesus said, If you were guilty, if you were if you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, but your guilt remains because you claim you can see. He, Jesus was bearing witness to the exact same blindness that I had when that picture was handed to me. There's no way I could discern what this guy had handed me. I was like I, I said thank you, his name was Marcel. He was from Guatemala. He he specialized in images of the Virgin. I actually bought one from him, you know, before I got saved. I did. I paid 300 bucks for it. <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> and anyway, this guy, he hands me this picture of me on this piece of wood. And he speaks in Spanish. And I was like, yeah, I like it. It's nice. And so then when I got saved, I saw why would someone put a dead sheep and a goat on my head? Well, here's the answer. That's my condition. (laughs) That is my condition. There's a sheep dying inside of me, and there's a sleeping goat. Here's the scripture. Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead. There's a sleeping goat, and there's a dead sheep. Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead. It's all in one picture of me. And I was like, wow. Of course, thank God the guy had left for Guatemala because I was pretty freshly saved. When I discovered it, and I might, I might have made a mistake <laughs> that would have would have changed the rest of my life. I think the Lord knew that, so the guy uh, was not in town when I went to ask him why he did this. But there is the paradigm exposed, and that's what Zen's talking about. And I am in 100% complete agreement of the hybridization. That's all there is to it. I want to share a story. It's yeah. a, a Jewish fable from 4,000 years back, and uh, I found this in a, a a book. I forget the the I think her, the lady's name is Ellen Frankel. She was a a professor that put together all these different stories, and and, and this this one stood out to me uh, when I was reading her book, and it was also confirmation for my seventh book, the one that I just uh just sent to the publisher and it will be available to the to the public um real soon. I, I don't know exactly when, but it's in okay. the production phase. It's called Skyfall, uh Angels of Destiny. Um, this is your new about, book, right? 
Yeah, this is the new one, and it's about uh, pre-existence and the pre-election of spirit. And it, you know, it is um, an, an elaboration basically on my sixth book, Sons of God, who we are, why we're here, and and uh, what all of this is about. And I, you know, I touch upon our first estate in that book, and I speak about our pre-existence and how we were predestinated for incarnation into the flesh and how all these things, you know, uh, all these revelations have been coming to light for a lot of people. But I think uh, your listening audience will, will right. find hey, this Zen, for you. We, we, before you read it, will you do me a favor so I can type it in the chat room? Guys, just for everyone that's in the chat room, everyone that's listening, Zen's books are available on Amazon. You can get them, you know, go under Zen Garcia, and, you know, he has uh, Lucifer, the father of Cain. I mean, really good one. Hey, here's a good one. Put Cain and Abel together, and what do you get? Cannibal, cannibal, cannibal. cannibal. Yeah. It's a cannibalistic system. That's what the Lord showed me, and it's right on the money. So he, you've got – would you just tell everybody the names of all the books that you have available on Amazon? Sure, sure, sure. And also uh... – people that are interested in my books, I'm going to share my email address as well because you can yes. contact me directly and I'll be glad to sell you an autographed copy. Um, and oh, it that'd doesn't be awesome. Matter which book, yeah, which book you're interested in. And also, I have hard copies of Sons of God that are not available anywhere else and they're just oh, really Oh, cool. Wow. Stuff. Yeah. But anyways, uh, my email is Z E N G A R C I A. Okay, let me get it in real quick. Hang on, I'm not the fastest typer, so give me a second. Zin Garcia C I A. Okay. Two zero one zero at gmail dot com. Okay at gmail dot com. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. I have uh, copies of my third book, A Different Way of Being, my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain, my fifth book, Awaken to the New World Order, and my sixth book, Sons of God, Who We Are and Why We're Here. And like I said, I have uh, hardback copies of that particular edition that are not available anywhere else. But um, in my next book, Skyfall, which will be my seventh book, uh, Angels of Destiny, I share this story that I'm about to read. And oh, this cool. story was confirmation for um, the things that I cover in that book, Skyfall, because it, like I said earlier, it's an elaboration of the work that I began in Sons of God uh, in speaking about our first estate and how we were part of, you know, being the in the Council of the Mighty, the Divine Council, the Elohim, uh, before our fall and how we were, you know, witness to the war in heaven and how all that led to our incarnation into the flesh and our being here and, and for what purpose and role uh, we have, you know, all that has to do with remembrance. And so, anyways, this story is called The Creation of Souls. It says, um, unlike the human body, which was created on the sixth day, the soul was created on the first day before anything else in the world. In that first hour, God created all souls and placed them in the highest heaven where they remain until called to enter the body chosen for them. When a baby is conceived, Layla, the angel of night, brings the fertilized egg before God who decides its fate, whether it will be a boy or a girl, rich or poor, strong or weak, beautiful or ugly, fat or thin, wise or foolish. Only one decision does God leave in the hands of the unborn soul, whether it will be righteous or wicked. Then God sends the angel of souls to the highest heaven to bring back the soul destined for that particular body. Always the soul rebels, for compared to the celestial world, the lower world is, by, is a poor place full of sorrow and pain. But God reprimands this rebellious soul, saying, Hush, this is why I created you. And so the soul enters the unborn child and nestles quietly under the mother's breast. The next morning, a second angel carries the soul to paradise, where it sees the righteous 
enjoying eternal happiness? If you follow God's Torah and live a worthy life, explains the angel, you will one day join these happy creatures here. But if not, and that night, the angel takes the soul to the gates of Gehenna, where it sees the angels of destruction whipping the wicked souls with burning lashes. Such is the fate of those who have devoted their lives to sin and cruelty, the angel says. It is for you to choose for yourself. Between the morning and the night of that day, the angel reveals to the unborn soul its future life, where it will live and where it will die, where it will be buried. And then at the end of nine months, the angel announces that it is time for the soul to leave the warm refuge of the womb. Oh, no, cries the soul, for that will be too much to bear. But the angel is quickly silent, says it. So God has decreed, against your will you were formed, and against your will you will be born. Against your will you will one day die. Such is fate. And with that, the angel strikes the newborn baby. Under the nose, leaving a small cleft there, then he extinguishes the light shining above its head, and instantly the soul forgets everything it has lent. Learn during the previous nine months. And then the baby emerges into the world crying and afraid. Each soul then spends the rest of its time on earth recovering all that it once knew. And that's a story called The Creation wow. of Soul. That's very interesting stuff, buddy. You know, that's it's frightening, really. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's really frightening. Um, You know, because I've had a lot of waking up over the years. And I was telling Clay just a little while ago, you know, my wife, um, who was, she was my girlfriend at the time that went out of the back of the hotel with me. She, She was standing right there when I got saved. And when Michael walked up to me and he said, pray with me, my brother, I, I mean, I was, I was, utterly and completely mesmerized but it was interesting because after i got saved uh you know Luz, who was she was just my other half on this planet but after i got saved you know things changed and i started manifesting the spiritual gifting and you know i even canceled our son's eye surgery that and you know he got healed and everybody was freaking out on you know, on this new stuff that was going on with Jonathan. Jonathan was a different person completely. And so my wife kept saying, I just want the old Johnny back. I just want the old Johnny back. And we had a, you know, we had a little tip. I said, you know, Johnny is gone. This is who I, this is, this is really who I am. The other guy Mm -hmm. is not who I was. It's, this is who I am. And she couldn't handle that. And I'll never forget, you know, Things started getting a little heated, and and I said, well, who do you think that was in the alley? And she got really mad, and I'll never forget how pissed she got. She goes, I knew it was an angel. All right. And I was like, whoa. I'd never seen her really, you know, uh, know, I'd experienced, you know, some degree of that, but it was weird. It was like she was furious it was an angel. She was furious. And I always wanted to know, why did he call me brother? Why is... And then I got to understand John 10. Have I not said Mm -hmm. you are God? I got to understand Psalm 82. You you are gods, but you shall die like men. You shall fall like one of the princes. And I was like, wait a minute. And then God's saying, why do you think you're always falling out of the sky upside down? Why do you think your, your name means Yahweh is given... A messenger that rings a bell. Why do you think your gift is I always show you everything's hidden upside down? Why do you think I showed you there's another race of beans here? And I, and I just, I put it all together, and I, I remember just bawling my head off. Not because of the information, but I bawled, folks, listen, because I realized that God had really taken on the form of a man and suffered on a cross for me. Right. Then he really suffered that bad in order to save my soul. Right. And I bawled and bawled and bawled. Because it's heavy when you realize what he did for you. And then I know you realize that yourself. Right. Yeah, I've been very deeply touched 
in that same way. And and how could you not when you come to the realization that, you know, Christ, the creator of the world, the creator of the universe, allowed himself to be tortured, tortured and murdered and spit on and uh, antagonized and ridiculed and harassed and just treated horrifically, uh, not for anything that he ever did, but just because he was hated for the truth that he held and for being in relationship with the Father and the Son and that those that were jealous of him, that didn't understand him and that, um, you know, even Satan, Satan knew who he was and he was uh, leading the Pharisees and the Jews to to accuse him and to murder him and to crucify him in horrific ways, but he allowed those things to, to happen to him in order to show us through example that he was the way and the truth and the life and and he was, you know, the sacrificial lamb. He was the Passover lamb and that yes. he was, you know, afterwards after he was glorified and ascended to the right hand of the Father, he showed us through example that he was the arbiter and the determiner of life and faith and everlasting life, eternal inheritance, and that that part of us that is connected to him, that Christ within us, the, the consciousness, the spirit within us that has chance to live forever and to go on into immortality because of the salvation, because of the grace that he extends to each one of us. I mean, that is just so beyond profound, and it's just uh, absolutely mind-blowing once you understand the revelation of who we are, who he right. was, while we're here, what all of this is about. It's just, wow, you know? Yeah, it's it's it's... It's tough to uh it's tough to comprehend and once you once it hits you I mean <laughs> well once it hit me man all I could do was cry I couldn't because mm-hmm. the reality and the profoundness you know people talk about God's love but I hear it done in such a watered down uh pseudo fake christian way it's like no 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 um, the cross, folks, the cross that Jesus died on was carved out for a guy named Bar Abbas. The word Bar means son of, Abbas means the father. What do you right. think the odds are that Jesus Christ, who was the son of the father, got crucified on a cross that was made for son of the father? Let me Let me explain that to you. That's got God's fingerprint all over it. To show you that that cross was meant for you. It was meant for you. But he took it for you. And so when you realize that, that when you get saved, you are Barabbas. That's who you are. You're that same vile, wretched being that the biggest trick Satan gets you on is, oh, you're more good than you are bad. You'll go to heaven if we put you on the scale. I mean, that's a lie from the pit of hell, folks. Because we're all pathetically monster sinners, all of us. And once you come to that conclusion and the realization, and then look at the cross, then realize what he did for you, then look at the humility that he suffered and the shame. It says he endured the cross despising the shame but he did it for the joy that was set before him. Let me ask anybody this question. Anybody give me an answer. I He showed me this answer. Do you know what the joy that was set before him was? Do you know what his joy was? It says, but for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. What joy? I'll tell you what, Joy, you and me, we're his joy. That's how much he loves you. Take hold of that, folks. Go get your napkins or your tissue out. <laughs> it floored me. I was like, ah. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, once you come to that revelation, you can't help but cry and bawl your eyes out um, because uh, it's it's so heavy. And to understand how much he suffered for us to come into this world and to lead us by example and to show us, you know, that we can have eternal life with him forever, that salvation is about foreverness, you know, and that this suffering that we're going through being here in the flesh and disconnected from home and and uh, being under the authority and the rulership of the powers and principalities of darkness having no real justice in this world that you know it's it's for the rich and the elite and that it's swayed in that way and that the new world order is planning a slaughter and a massacre of ungodly proportions i mean all that is so heavy but you know, we're we're not of this world. Christ said that his kingdom is not of this world. And so um, that's the, the things that I write about. And, and I try to provide hope for people so that they can come to remembrance and not be focused on this world and the suffering of it and to know who they are in truth, you know, that we're spiritual beings, we're Fall, you know, fallen angels, sons of God that are incarnated into flesh form. We're in these fallen states of being and in this fallen world, but it's only temporary that it's but a short time, one journey, one lifetime in the immortal journey of soul and that we have so much to look forward to, you know, and I know myself and in, in my physicality that I deal with a lot of pain and a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't be able to put up with, you know, because of my disability, but each one right. of us has, has different things that we're going through and that de- we're dealing with, and each one of our suffering is personal. Uh, there's so many people now that are, you know, dealing with um, whatever, emotional, uh, mental, um, physical disabilities, whatever, uh, even sexual disabilities, you know, that we're we're all broken on some level, and so, right. um, and most, you know, and and so we're all suffering, and we're all looking for the redemption that is Christ, and and know for those that don't that there is hope in Him, that He truly is the way and the truth and the light, and that He and the Father are one, and He's provided us a way home. All you have to do is seek Him, seek out His truth, learn His gospel. All the teachings are there. Uh, he shows and, and verifies for us who we are, why we're here, what all of this is about. And Johnny and I, uh, John the Baptist, all the others that know the truth of these things, we are nothing special. Each one of you can aspire to know these things and can be led to the same revelation. Absolutely. And, you know, it it all starts, and, and I, I'm just, Personally speaking, it all started with an honest question from Jonathan Kleck to God. I I said, look, I know I deserve to go to hell. I I'd, I'd just come to this point where I knew I'd done too many things in my life to get on the scale and make the scale even out ever again, which was a blessing, by the way. And I said, you know, I know I deserve to go to hell, but, you know, I, I know Jesus is real, but I just don't know which one he is. And I, I was standing there, and I remember where I was. I was in the living room of the house I lived on on Hathaway. And I said, so, you know, I I want to just know the truth, Lord. I just want to know the truth because I want to know which Jesus is the right Jesus because the Mormons have one, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a different one, the Catholics have a different one, the Protestants have a different one, the Baptists have a different one. They're all different. I was like, you know... Can you just show me the truth? That's what I asked. But it was an honest question. I said, can you please just show me the truth? And man, I'm not kidding. I started just getting like these goosebumps and electrical charge all over my body. And there it was. And he was like, okay, you asked for it. <laughs> oh, by the way, you were predestined for this. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's... If you, yeah, your name, when you find out your name, you're going to have a nervous breakdown, by the way. <laughs> I was like, ah. And so, you know, it's it's crazy, but 
if you feel that little nudge inside of you, and you know, it's like, you know, sometimes you'll be in a car and you go, don't turn that way, don't turn that way. You know, some will tell you not to go a certain way. It's kind of weird, you know, and, and you listen to that instinct, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like God just saying, hey, you know, just come here. I'm, Hey, I'm right here. Hey, 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 I know that, you know, that question you wanted to ask, just ask it, ask it. And I, I did. I asked it. Right. And here I am, uh, I don't know, 12 years later or 11 years later. <laughs> and, and it's just more information than I know what to do with. I mean, poor Clay. He's always strapped to an editing thing. <laughs> God bless his heart. By the way, Clay says hello, Zen. He says oh, hi. Tell him I support, yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, so, Clay, hey, I got a question for you, man. This should, an hour is like entirely too short a time. So maybe like next week, could you come on for another hour? <laughs> sure. sure Would you absolutely. Would? Glad to. That'd be awesome. Oh, okay. Also, don't forget to, to ra- remind everybody that. Uh, you're going to be on with the hijacker and me tomorrow night, uh, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., which is late. Okay. But, can, um, can, yeah, can you tell everybody, hey, Cookie or, Cookie or someone in the chat room, uh, uh, can you type in what Zen says for me? So go ahead, tell Cookie, and she'll type it in, or Cookie or Cat okay, or anybody great, else. Okay, great, great. Okay, Cookie. Yes, we're going to be on with the, the hijacker. And it'll be 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., and that's freedomslips.com, freedomslips.com. And, um, you know, it, it, it's 12 a.m. my time. It's, it's 12 no, a.m. it's 12 a.m. Eastern, Eastern. Eastern. Okay, 12 so it's 12 a.m. Eastern uh, Standard Time. So, you know, if you're Central, then you, you'd log in at 11 after you're West Coast. Some right. other time. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So Zen yeah, is a hijacker. Yeah, freedomslips.com. And hijacker. Yeah, she's got the it. name of the show is Changing Reality. Ooh. <laughs> well, we're going to try and do that. Hey, uh, maybe uh, Clay will be finished with this insane video we're working on. This thing's going to yeah. blow your mind. Then you got to see this thing. It's going to blow your mind to see what the Washington Monument Really is. <laughs> oh yeah, you were telling me about yeah. that, brother. I you gotta was, uh, see yeah, the you gotta pretty... see the pictures, man. I free. I was like, <laughs> just every time I think there's no more information, there's a ton more information. Oh gosh, so, yeah. Yeah, maybe we can get that into the the chat room. There's a chat room there, right? Yeah, there's a chat room. Um, yeah, but it's a, it, it's a it should be Studio A, freedomslips.com, and uh. FreedomSlip.com. Yeah. There's a, okay, they have cool. uh, different hosts on 24 hours a day, but at 12 a.m., you know, Eastern Time, uh, the Changing Reality Show will start, and both Johnny and I will, will be on uh, with the hijacker for two hours. So join us there. It'll be an interesting Oh, evening. right. This is going to be fun, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounds so great. Jen, I love you, man. It's um, Love you can, too, you just, brother. can you give everybody just a quick another plug on on the books? Just Cookie, one more time. So to get Zen's books, here's the names of the books. Tell them the names first. Yeah, it's uh, Lucifer, Father of Cain is my fourth one. My third book, A Different Way of Being. My fifth book is uh, Awaken to the New World Order. And my sixth book is Sons of God, Who We Are, While We're Here. And my seventh book will be Skyfall, Angels of Destiny, um, The Pre-Existence and Pre-Election of Soul. And that will okay. be out probably less than a year, but uh, I'll let people know when it's uh, available, made available. Awesome. Then, uh, guys, and y'all can also go on Amazon.com. Get the book, right. And, uh, you know, just check them out. You'll find them. I went on, I went on a search engine, and it was easy to find so y'all go check them out, and you can get autographed copies from Zen. Some really cool, just delved into information, guys. If you really want to crack the egg open, crack it open this way. He's very, he's just got so much great information. Right. Uh, Zen, one last hey, thing. Um, yeah. 
just my email real quick again is Zen Garcia two zero one zero at gmail dot com for those that are interested in contact me directly for autographed copies. I'll be glad to let you know how much they are. Just email me and uh we'll go yeah. into the We got it in the chat room, yeah. yeah. And here, yeah, I'm gonna right. make Zen come on next week again because too short time. Okay, love you, Zen. We got ten seconds. God bless you. All right, brother. And love you too. God bless all. We'll see you. I'll talk to you later. Okay, buddy. Bye bye. All right, brother. Good night. Good night.